you. Tapping in real quick for this UFC fight night. Marcin Tybura versus Sergey Spivak. Two. Will we see a part three? Will there be a rubber match? Or will Marcin Tybura, the OG, dead this rivalry this coming Saturday? We gonna have to tune in and find out, man. I appreciate y'all for tapping in, though. This video right here, it's the final thoughts, the final look, the final answer. Whatever you want to call it, we're going to run through this motherfucker one last time. You heard me? Real quick. Two pick switches. Not in the main picks. Nothing to be worried about. Something light. Nothing major. We're going to talk about it real quick. I already did the breakdown. I'm not going to drag this out and hold y'all ear hostage. This is just the final thoughts, the final look, the final run through, and the final answer. You know what I mean? Um, my shit still out of order. So uh, you won't have to bear with me as far as all that goes. You understand what I'm saying? Danny Barlow. Matter of fact, let's talk about... Uh, Let's talk about these four fights first. Let's get them the fuck out the way. First pick switch. Let's talk about this. The boy Gregorio against Kazama. I'm rocking with Kazama to get this one done. In some way, shape, form, or fashion. I mean, whether that's inside the distance via KO, TKO, or some kind of submission, club and sub situation. I mean... Knocks him out, just catching him clean and clipping him on the feet. Or doing the better work over the course of 15. We rocking with Kazama. I went back. It wasn't sitting well with me. You know what I mean? Last week, it was some fights I wanted nothing to do with. I did a dog or pass shit with it. You understand what I'm saying to you? And didn't give it the uh, due diligence it deserved. You know, and it cost me as far as picks right and picks correct. Picked all the proper ones correct. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody that meant something and that we needed to secure the bags, they was all correct with the exception of the one female fighting Victoria. You know what I'm saying? But everybody else came through and secured the bag 100%. But those dog or pass fights that I didn't give they due diligence to, they cost me all my pick percentage. You know what I mean? So I dug on these little motherfuckers real quick. Gregorio's 8-4. Up against opposition with combined records, 48 wins and 34 losses. He should be 12-0 in my personal opinion. Up against that level of opposition, he shouldn't be 8-4. He should have won every last one of them motherfucking fights. But that shows you what level of opposition this young man is and isn't. You understand what I'm saying to you? Eight and four up against opposition with combined records of 48 wins and 34 losses. Now, on the other side with Kazama, it's nothing to call home and go crazy about. Ten and four up against opposition with combined records of 101 wins, 38 losses. It is a better level of opposition though, but that's proven by what we already know anyway from his two fights in the UFC. Nakamura, or however you say his name, and Armfield, come on, man. Both those individuals are a higher level of opposition than that of a Chad, however you say Chad's last name. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, you know, and then outside of the UFC, he faced a higher level of opposition than anything um, Gregorio's faced in his 8-4 and four run or... Higher level of opposition than anything, any tier. Gregorio is anywhere near, in my personal opinion, if you understand what I'm saying to you, man. Kazama has by far had the harder run. It hasn't been against magnificent opposition. You know, Nakamura's proven. He's, he's undefeated. That always going to go, in my personal opinion, sometime in the near future. I don't know when, but Nakamura is a decent individual to be losing to as of right now and Garrett Armfield's body of work is solid man both of them better it's another name outside the UFC he fought I can't think of it right now better than Chad L whatever the fuck Chad's last name is again but anyway too much time on this already the pick switches to Kazama due to the fact that he's 
by four faced a higher level of opposition on his way to the UFC and since being in the UFC. And, um, you know, I feel like he'll be able to go ahead and do what needs to be done to get Gregorio the fuck up out of there, make him, you know, eight and five, moving Kazama to 11 and four, and probably doing it inside a distance because Gregorio, as far as level of opposition is concerned, he's beaten everybody on that level and a tier or two above. You know, the arm fields and the Nakamura's and the one other individual I can't think of, you know, those are the ones that he lost to. Those were the higher levels of opposition, way that way higher than a Gregorio. Even his fourth loss, his other his other loss is a higher level of opposition than Gregorio, not as high as an Armfield or a Nakamura, in my personal opinion. But yeah, you know I mean, it's Kazama. Maybe it cost me. I don't think it does, man. I'm rocking with Kazama, and he's an underdog. We in a doghouse. It's not a dog or pair situation. This the fucking pick. You know what I mean? Um, I'm still rocking with Stephanie Still want nothing to do with the fight But I still like the advantages In low level women's MMA Nine years the youth Six or eight inch reach advantage Depending on where you look it up at And a five inch height advantage You understand what I'm saying to you I just like her to go ahead And be able to do the better work Over the course of 15 minutes She's five one and one You know what I mean So she can get into a dog fight And you know go to a draw Um 5-1-1 one, one up against opposition with combined records of 16 wins and two losses were T, I don't know how to pronounce her name, is 5-0 and o up against opposition with combined records of 23-11. and 11. And I just feel like she's going to be 5-1. and one. Stephanie's going to be 6-1-1, one and, one, and that's just that with that. Yana and Chelsea, I still don't want anything to do with this fight. I see that they did move this fight up. I believe this fight might be on the main card now. If Chelsea's still an underdog, you know, Chelsea's still the pick regardless. There's nothing spectacular about either one of these individuals near one of these young women impress me and stand out anywhere spectacularly in any way shape form or fashion you understand what i'm saying to you but it's crazy to say i believe chelsea at dog money has more of a dog in her than yana anyway you know what i mean although i have seen her you know I, that fight keeps flashing back where she was falling the fuck apart and Running the fuck away, you know what I'm saying? I don't believe Yana can do that to her, though. You know what I mean? That was in the Norma Dumont fight, I believe. And listen, man, put some respect on Norma's name, man. You know what I mean? Norma ain't no fucking chump. So that's not a bad loss, you feel me? The way it all kind of went down <laughs> was kind of fucking funny. But Chelsea's still the pick, man. I don't want anything to do with it, but Chelsea's still the pick. On to this uh, other pick switch. My bad, we already eight minutes in. It's Carl versus Old Boy. Don't know how to pronounce his name, and I've switched to Old Boy, man. I had to go look a little bit more. Go look at Old Boy's, you know what I mean? All the tape I could find on Old Boy. Same shit I did for Top. Same shit I did for everybody that's fought Carl Williams. I'm not high on Carl Williams and the way that the motherfucker fights. Like, if he get the slang in him, the right motherfucker's gonna cl cleanly connect that and catch this motherfucker and put him smooth out, like disconnect him from consciousness, stiffen him up. He probably gonna be in the same fighting stance that he was standing in when he hit the fucking ground. It's not gonna be long before this shit happened. And I feel like old boy can do it. I feel like old boy can improve to eight and O with eight knockouts and get give Carl Williams his first KO TKO loss inside the distance. Only other loss is via sub. That's not old boy's playground. But on the feet where Carl does like to play around, he gonna get knocked the fuck out, man. I don't think he's gonna be able to get the takedown, the first one. You know what I mean? I don't think he's gonna be able to get the first one, and then I think he's gonna get clipped with something in that exchange where uh, they're breaking apart from each other, man. Like, I think old boy's gonna knock him the fuck out, man. It's just the way... When you... <laughs> you see Carl... You see Carl when he get the... If you catch him with a jab or something, and he try... This motherfucker get the throwing like this. He get the throwing from the hips and shit, man. What the fuck? It's only a matter of time, man. So, it's not even a fade situation where I'm like, fuck it. I'm just fading this motherfucker until his chin get clipped. 
because I've picked him in the past. You know what I'm saying? I had him picked originally for this matchup. But I just went back, man. He's touched in every fight. He's touched in every motherfucking fight. And I think this motherfucker, even more so than Tafa, when he touches him, is going to be a problem. You know what I mean? I think he's more powerful. I think he's faster. I think he's more, you know, diverse in the striking department. More agile. Got a little bit better movement, foot movement, all that than the Tafa or some of these others. Especially a Lucas and these other individuals that he's faced in his past. You understand what I'm saying to you? And that old okie doke shit, throwing, th throwing, th throwing from the motherfucking hips, not giving a shit, thinking, you know, you just going to get... Get one off, that shit ain't gonna keep working, man. Chin all up in the motherfucking air like this, just throwing from the motherfucking hips, silver back shit, you know what I mean? Get the fuck up out of here. Somebody's gonna catch that thing clean, and I think it's gonna be old boy, man. I think it's gonna, he watching the tape. He watching it all, too. He why you be fucking crazy to think he's not. He watching it, too. And he know the motherfucker wanted takedowns. You understand what I'm saying to you? He know he want them takedowns, man. You know what I mean? But that shit gonna start on the feet. And Carl gets touched in every motherfucking fight. I just feel like old boy is going to touch him on Saturday night like he's never been touched before in his life. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Fuck. Boop. Fuck the boop, bop, bip. You know what I mean? It boom, boom. Woo. Woo. Oh, whole shit. From head to motherfucking toe. Back up from the floor, back up to the head. You know what I mean? Just everything is going to be vibe. Woo, 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 woo. Motherfucker, you been, anybody out there been rocked before know what the fuck I'm talking about, man. He get, he fitting to catch that kind of work. He fitting to catch that kind of, I'm a fighter, motherfucker. You know what I'm talking about? So I, I know what it's like to be hit. You know what I mean? I done knocked motherfuckers out. I done been knocked the fuck out. You know what I mean? It's only two things you can do in this world. You can win or you can lose. And I don't give a fuck about losing. So you getting all of me every time. So if you catch the fucking dub... Adds off to you. I gave you everything I fucking had. You know what I mean? You ain't never getting just a piece of me. You understand what I'm saying to you? So I know what it's like to get rocked. You know what I mean? By a big boy. And feel that shit from the floor. And I feel like Carl fit in the fuck. Carl fit to feel some shit like that on Saturday night. And that that shot. That shot. Carl ain't probably ain't never felt no shit like that in his life. So that shot, that, that moment, I've been there back and been there again. You understand what I'm saying to you? So the, sh the shock is out the way for me. We banging me, I know I'm in a fucking fight. You understand what I'm saying to you? I don't get me personally. You go and you just get off on somebody. You just get your rocks off on somebody. You just pounding them the fuck out and you just doing work to them. Bully shit. You ain't getting nothing off your check. I need to get hit, hit me in the mouth. Let me taste my motherfucking blood. Beat on me a little bit, because that's the only way all of this is getting the fuck up out of me. You know what I mean? It's not getting up out of me going out here and beating on the bags, throwing the steel around. It's not going to get out of me if I go in here and just beat a motherfucker up all crazy. Beat me back. Beat on me. Rip this body. Bang my mother. Catch me slipping. You know what I mean? Put me in compromisable position. Let me know I'm in a motherfucking fight. And when it's over... It's all been left out there. You know what I mean? I don't know that Carl's like that, though. I feel like when Carl feel that from the floor up, that moment, that moment is shot. It's that, you know what I mean, where he gets rocked. Boom, 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 boom. He gonna, he's going to get rocked again. Boom, boom. And put under. It's going to be over for him. It's going to it's gonna be too fucking much for him. You know what I'm saying? In my personal opinion, if old boy gets off like... The way Taffa got off a motherfucking jab, man. If old boy gets that motherfucking jab, boom, and just momentarily shocks Carl. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> he just gonna fucking thump on him. You know what I mean? He's just gonna come in for the finish, man. It's gonna be over. He's a lot faster and a lot more agile, a lot more diverse in the striking department. It's a lot more this motherfucker can do than a Taffa or a Lucas or any of these other motherfuckers, let alone MMA, but they had kickboxing background in their pocket. That fuck Carl, man. So, my bad, y'all. The, the pick has been switched. Maybe it'll cost me. Maybe he won't be able to stop the fucking takedowns and Carl will just drag this motherfucker down and rinse and repeat for 15 minutes. But I don't think so, man. 
I don't think he's getting him up out of there, even if he gets him down. You understand what I'm saying to you? I think it's going to find its way back up to the feet. And I think my man's going to find his way to uh, connecting on that chin, man. He's not short. It ain't no T-Rex arm situation. He's not outreached here. He actually has the reach by just a slight bit. You know what I mean? So, yeah. My bad, man. It's Kazama on the pick switch. We still rocking with Stephanie to go ahead and get it done. We still rocking with Chelsea to get it done. And it's an uh, old boy whose name I don't know how to pronounce. It's probably something real easy, but the way this shit's spelled just looks fucking bananas, man. You know what I'm saying? But it's him. He'll probably give Carl his first loss inside the distance, man. You know what I mean? Most likely. More than likely. Knocking old boy to fuck. I'm telling you, he touched that chin, man. He touched that chin. He gonna put him somewhere he ain't used to being. Moving on. Fuck Carl. We taking Carol. Rosa, all day long. Possibly a 30-27 situation. Smooth across the board. That hasn't changed for me. Better body of work. Better wins. Better losses. It's just... Everything's better in my personal opinion. Absolutely everywhere on that side of things, man. So that's, the, that's still the same. Danny Barlow, still the same. Going there, do the damn thing, man. You know what I'm saying? Secure that bag. Keep it pushing. Hasn't met his ceiling yet. Don't believe this dude's even a speed bump, let alone a motherfucking roadblock in any way, shape, form, or fashion. We're on the other side of things. Danny is all of those things, in my opinion, to uh, Nico Live or whatever the fuck old boy's name is. It's Chepe for me all day, still, with all due respect to Damon Jackson. That's the homie. Chepe's going to get it done. This is prime time, Chepe. Chepe's a problem, man. Chepe's a motherfucking problem in every motherfucking department. And in 2024, man, right here, right now, this coming Saturday, I don't see a night that Damon Jackson clips him and disconnects him from his consciousness because that would be the only way that Damon Jackson would win this fight. He's not going to win it via locking up his submission. Not in my personal opinion. Not in this matchup. He's not going to win via wrestling <clears throat> or grappling, catching the better of any of those exchanges. Not in this matchup. Not in my personal opinion, man. You know what I mean? And Chepe's movement and angles, you know, volume, and just pressure in the striking department. If he doesn't like something that Damon is coming from Damon, you know, he'll transition and put the fight where he wants it. It's Chepe all day. And most likely inside the distance in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Because like I said, in my personal opinion, this is prime time Chepe that we getting. Chepe that we getting. Um, not cemento over Fialo. It's still not cemento for me, man. You know what I mean? It's still not cemento for me all day, every day, even on Sunday when I cash the ticket where I got him as a leg. You know what I mean? I'm fucking with him. It's still Basharat over uh, Gutierrez. You know what I mean? And it, with all due respect to Gutierrez, and it's still Ty Bure in the main event to secure the victory via unanimous decision. If not, finding the finish inside the distance, somewhere in the, you know, fourth or the fifth championship main event type rounds. You understand what I'm saying to you? Where Sergey Spivak is liable to get fucking drowned. You know what I mean? Word, I'm telling you. He gonna fuck around and blow too much of his motherfucking load in them first three rounds. Trying to do it. Not a whole lot of people are able to do by disconnecting Marcin Tibera from his consciousness and getting him the fuck up out of there. You understand what I'm saying to you? And Tibera is built for this shit. He's just, for this level of opposition anyway, in my personal opinion, he's built for this shit and he's still going to be right the fuck there doing the better body to work, man. You know what I mean? And putting it the fuck on Spivak and Spivak may fall the fuck apart and fall victim to a KO, TKO, inside the distance type situation in those later rounds, man. But if he doesn't, it's Marcin Ty Bure. About a five-round, 25-minute decision. And hopefully he takes those gloves off and walks away with his chin up and his chest out. 
just securing a five round main event victory for 25 minutes and if it goes 25 minutes i'm i'm putting my money that he gets performance of the night you know what i mean as he just rides the fuck off into the night i hope i hope that's how he does it because you know i personally don't believe like i said before the ufc has a whole lot of big fights playing for this man you know what i mean go out on top my guy and then back, you know, to Zalal versus Jarno. We're going to do that last, man. I ain't skip it. We just doing it last. Because these two 14, 5, and 1 individuals, they are very, very, very closely matched up and way, way, way closer than what this money line suggests in my personal opinion, man. Why the fuck is Zalal sitting as almost one of, if not the biggest favorite on this motherfucking card, man? Because he came back in the UFC and looked good against Billy Q. And he was looking good on his way back into the UFC after not looking so good on his first uh, run in the UFC. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Jarno Aarons is nobody's chump stop. I said it before, I say it again, I'll be redundant, my friends. He's nobody's chump stop. Uh-uh, no, sir, absolutely not. No, no, I am nobody's chump stop, motherfucker. And you got me as one of the biggest underdogs on the court. Watch out, I'm trying to tell you. Zalal, very well, may win this fight. He will not justify that price, though, in my personal opinion. Not on any fucking night, man. And if he fucks around too much, Jarno will submit his motherfucking ass, man. I'm telling you, man. I said this shit before when Jarno was an underdog, and he cashed for me as an underdog. You know what I'm saying? I might have had Julian and Jarno on the same court, if I'm not mistaken. Julian Rosa might have been up, and uh, Jarno might have been down on the prelims, man. And I might have had Julian and Jarno, and they both got it the fuck done, man. Man, listen, I don't sleep on him. I don't sleep. I'm catching the chills back here up underneath the motherfucking air conditioner, man. I don't sleep on a young man. That's all I'm saying. When it comes to the Zalal Youssef fight. Please do yourself a favor and secure your back door. If you have this month, he's like one of the biggest favorites on the card. So if you have him, you know, just put your parlays together, put your legs together, and then slap him on at the top. Put your legs together on another parlay and slap Jarno with plus money on the top on the other side. You know what I mean? You'll be a lot more comfortable when that fight starts and you get to see that action. And you get to see what's happening up in that motherfucker. And that money line starts to change and drastically. And they even money. I'm trying to tell you, you'll be feeling a lot more comfortable if your back door is secure when it comes to this motherfucking fight, man. I'm telling you, if you want to secure your door on any fights on this card, I'm telling you, Basharat is good, man. Chepe is good, man. Danny is good. Carol, not Carl. Carol. Is good. Nascimento is good. In my personal opinion. <clears throat> Secure your back door on all heavyweight fights, although I believe, and main events, although I believe Tabura is the solid pick. And I'm confident it's heavyweight MMA. You secure your back door and go both ways. Carl Williams versus Old Boy is heavyweight MMA. It can go both ways. You know what I mean? He could fuck around and come out here and show us that, you know, old boy is like a Robellus to Spain or something. You know what I mean? Can't get the fuck up. Just maybe not the easiest to get down, but once you get him down, just can't get the fuck back up, man. And boy, oh boy, we get a dragged out fuckery match. You know what I mean? Who the fuck knows? I like him to knock Carl Williams the fuck out, though. All he got to do is touch him. But that's me. It's heavyweight MMA. Cover your back door, man. The ladies, it's women's MMA, man. You want to cover your back door? Cover your back door. You know what I'm saying? I like two of them last week. One of them shit the bag. You know what I mean? I like two of them this week. 
One of them may very well shit the bag. Well, I like three of them this week. One of them might very well shit the bag. You know what I mean? Stephanie versus T. Just stay the fuck away from the fight. You know what I'm saying? Yana versus Chelsea. Just stay the fuck away from the fight unless you confident Chelsea's going to get it done, man. You have to be ex not highly confident, extremely overly confident in women's MMA matchup when they're a high favorite. You understand what I'm saying to you? If you got them at a pick em price tag or plus money, you know, good good money. But if you got a motherfucker at minus two something, might going up upwards like that, you had to be, in my personal opinion, extremely confident. You know what I mean? Not not highly, con extremely, overly confident in your pick. Otherwise, it'll cost you the bag at the end of the night, and you'll be like, man, shit, I knew better, man. Women's MMA, heavyweight MMA. Like, what the fuck? These fights are clear stayaways. What the fuck? You start banging your head. Want to start wanting to put your fucking forehead through the drywall and shit. I've been there. If you haven't, you ain't a true fucking degenerate. You know what I mean? I've been there, right? Put, just bang my shit, right? Boom! Right through the motherfucking drywall, man. Like, Jesus fuck. Fuck it, because I don't want to punch something. I want to feel something. Bang! You know what I mean? Like, I need to get this shit up out of me. God damn it, I knew better. I did it on a couple parlays this weekend where I locked Victoria in them motherfuckers, man. Thank God it was on the prelims and then, like, one or two whole cars. And the whole main car was good for me and... Mackenzie was good for me. I ain't locked her up in everything, but I locked her up in one of my main car joints and one of my motherfucking seven-leggers, you know what I'm saying? Everything else was good for me. But these women and these heavyweights, with all due respect to these women and these heavyweights, because they make great fucking fights, it's why they so, you know, they're the two divisions, in my personal opinion, that are the most unpredictable because anything can happen at any given time, on any given night, I don't give a fuck who you are. You can't call these motherfuckers with a hundred percent, you know, man, shit, I know. Get the fuck up out of here. No, you don't. Uh, these motherfuckers are swinging and banging at 280 pounds after they rehydrate bare minimum. One of them catches the other one clean at any given time. They going to fuck the sleep in this unless they just built like that. And that's when you find out somebody's battle tested. You understand? But for the most part, in this any one of them can connect cleanly and put the other one out. And in women's MMA, the reason women's MMA is so hard to predict, in my personal opinion, but also so fucking great to watch, is because they go hard. Every fucking time. It's why there's so many draws and so many fucking decisions where people feel like it went the wrong way and there was robberies. You understand what I'm saying to you? Because they, and there's not so many finishes because they bite down and they go hard. Unfortunately, they go harder than a lot of the men on the cards. <clears throat> because there's, like this one, there's three. There's more than usual. For 11 fights, there's three females. Three female fights, you feel what I'm saying to you? But those three females, they want performance of the night or knockout of the night, you know what I mean? Fight of the night or, you know, submission of the night. And they got to try to get that over the male fights that already took place and the male fights that are double or triple in comparison to their fights that are getting ready to take place after their fights, you feel what I'm saying? They really trying to leave an impression in the motherfuckers. Shit. You know what I mean? So when it's all said and done with, they remembering that fight. Not the 13 male fights that happened. Like, in my personal opinion, that's why they so fucking hard to predict. They go so fucking hard trying to get that bag because they up against it. They up against it. Sometimes there's no female fight. Sometimes there's one female fight and 12 men fight. That's why they go so hard. You know what I mean? That's why they so hard to predict, too. You know what I mean? Heavyweight and females, man. So just leave them the fuck alone, for real, for real. You <laughs> know what I mean? And if you got questions, secure your back door. For me, I don't really have no questions when it comes to Danny Barlow, Chepe Mariscal, Alain Nascimento, and Javi Basharat. I don't. Only reason I don't have Carol in there is it's women's MMA. You know what I mean? There'll be a parlay in where I attach that leg. 
just that one and not go both ways because that's my pick. Just like there will be a parlay where I attach the Tybura leg. Just that leg, not going both ways because that's my pick. You know what I mean? I'm not going to secure my back door. I'm putting my parlays in. You know what I mean? And then I'll attach a leg to another parlay and drop something on it. You feel what I'm saying to you for certain fights on this card, man? You know what I mean? Carol, Tybura, for the most part. And uh, I'll go both ways secure my door with Zalal and Jarno. But Basharat, Nascimento, Chepe, Chepe, and uh, Danny, lock them up for me. I already have, you know what I mean? And then it's securing with Zalal and uh, Jarno and adding a leg with Tybura and Carl, uh, Carol, adding a leg with, uh, or possibly securing a door, probably just adding a leg though, with uh, old boy to knock out um, Carl. You understand what I'm saying to you? But yeah, when it come to my, my lock-ins, they Javi, Chepe, um, not Cemento and Danny. And then everything else is just adding a leg or a swap out option, you know what I mean? And then I'll talk about my haymaker, you feel me? But all oh, that's a little bit later on. I already took too long for these final motherfucking thoughts. But that's what it is, man. The final look, the final thoughts, the final answer, the final talk. It's a wrap, y'all. I'm going to hit back, tap back in with these parlays, man. And that's going to be that with that. Appreciate y'all for tapping in.